start the stream. Okay, it saves live, so let's start and hope it, it will be streaming. Yeah, it is. So, um, you already know uh, about models in Rails. Uh, last time we were talking about controllers and uh, today uh, we will we will talk about the last part of MVC uh, is about views. Um, last time I already touched this topic a little bit, and so let's let's continue our journey to learning views. Um, I've already created a simple Rails app. Uh, it's like a pretty simple just app with one model. Uh, I've got a model uh, called uh, dish, uh, yeah, so I will use it for um, for examples. Uh, let's start from creating a new controller uh, because well views are unusable without controllers. All the requests come to the controller so we uh, we need to create at least one. Uh, I'll create a um, dish controller. Uh, is it large enough? Do you see it well? Okay. Controller. Um, again, I need to uh, specify in routes that we now have dish controller. I'm creating this controller. Uh, we were talking about this last time, so I won't. Uh, I won't describe what I'm doing. Index. Okay, uh, I've defined it, uh, one simple road uh, for dishes. Let's quickly check it. Uh, let's quickly check it. So. Uh, yeah, here we have it, dishes. Um, let me quickly, quickly remove. Um, uh, let me quickly disable active storage if I can do it quickly, so it won't pollute our output for roads. We don't need it for now. I'm disabling active active storage. Uh, I for, forgot to do this before. Uh, I need to do it now. Yeah, now we have more nice uh, output for our roads. Just one line for our dish controller. 
Okay, um, let me just try to request it in browser. Delicious. Sorry, I can't enlarge our address line, uh, but I can enlarge text on our screen. Uh, delicious controller to define it. Um, something went wrong. It can't recognize our controller. Probably I made a typo or something like this. Yeah, um, so now it works. I mean, controller works, but uh, we still have an error. And uh, uh, this error says that uh, template is missing. And well, basically, uh, that's what we will talk about today, uh, templates and views. As you probably remember, uh, last time, in order to demonstrate uh, controllers, how controllers work, how roads work, I did something like this, uh, render plane uh, Um, so it just, uh, this controller, uh, this string uh, makes, our, makes our controller to return just simple plain. But sometimes uh, we want to return not only string, but uh, well, HTML, right? Um, how we can do this? Uh, the easiest way is to do it something like this. Uh, we say render and then index. Uh, it means uh, that we want to render view that called index. Let me quickly refresh our controller. We should probably have an error that says, yeah, template is missing. Um, actually, uh, the error kind of suggests us uh, where, where should this uh, view or template be located. Um, uh, let me create create this template. Uh, I use word template and view uh, interchangeable during our lecture, but well, I treat it as a different things and probably it's like more advanced topic. I will touch it a little, well, at the end of lecture, but well, for now I will use word template and word view uh, meaning the same thing. Um, since our controller called dishes, uh, we need to create a folder in app views uh, folder called dishes as well. The same name as a uh, controller name. Uh, what I do is create in a directory mkdir app views dishes. Right? And then uh, I, I need to create uh, a view. App uh, views uh, dishes and uh, well the file for our view uh, should be named in the same way uh, as we named it in our controller. I named it index uh, so I will create a index index file here. Uh, then uh, I need to write an extension for this file and well, for now we needed uh, html.erb. What does it mean? Uh, HTML here means that this view is for uh, uh, for HTML, right? Uh, for example, sometimes not only browsers use our app. Sometimes uh, we want to make uh, API, so another apps will use our Rails. Uh, our controller will will make requests to our controller, and in this case we uh, won't need HTML uh, view, but we will need a, for example, JSON uh, JSON view. But uh, well, for now we make requests from browser, and browser expects HTML. Uh, then uh, I write dot erb. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, well, basically, uh, we may use different uh, different render engines. Uh, default render engine is 
ERB. Uh, it looks uh, very similar to HTML. We will uh, look at it. And later uh, I will show you uh, kind of different, another, another uh, render engine. So let me create this file. Um, Earbeat, ERB render render engine is it well it looks very similar to HTML. For example, if you want to create H1 tag, uh, uh, we need to write uh, something like this. That is like it looks very similar to HTML. Uh, there is no difference. Uh, let's see that it works. Yeah, it works. So right now we rendered our dishes. Um, we may add some more tags. Something like this. Yes, it appears on our page. Uh, also, ERB allows us to uh, uh, to write something like um, hmm, to execute Ruby code uh, in our view, and then like output the result of of this code uh, to browser. For example, uh, we may want to do something like this. Uh, plus two. Uh, you can notice that uh, it no longer looks like uh, HTML, right? It's uh, some weird tag. I use uh, uh, parentheses and then a percent symbol. Um, let me write something like this. Let's see that it works. Yeah, here we go. Uh, we may um, execute any kind of Ruby code here. I don't know. Something like this. Um, uh, for example, we want to output the number of dishes we have in our sim system. Let's uh, create uh, some dishes. Uh, this is my Rails console here. Uh, let's see that we have uh, like zero dishes here right now in our system. Uh, so let's output it. Uh, we may write something like this dish count. Yeah, here we go. Um, let's create a dish. Uh, create. It has name, uh, name field. Oh, I don't know. Let's create pizza. Let it be four hundred grams. Sorry. Right. Thank you. I have no idea how many calories it has. Uh, fine, ten thousand. Uh, okay, uh, we created it. Let's see that we have uh, one dish. 
Yeah, um, we may execute any code uh, if we use this special syntax in uh, ERB in our views. Uh, what if we want to? Hmm, what if we want to output uh, like output all those dishes, right? Well, sometimes we we may want want to do this. Um, uh, we can do it. Hmm, we can uh, do some operation in our views as well. For example, uh, I use like another syntax for this. Uh, I instead of adding uh, equal equal symbol, I add a minus symbol here. So I do something like this: dish all uh, each do. Let it be a list. I kind of mix uh, HTML tags with our like Ruby interpolation tag. Uh, item. And now, uh, kind of inside of this iteration, I may use this uh, dish variable I just specified. For example, uh, dish name h2. Let's see that it works. Yeah, here we go. We have our pepperoni pizza. Let's output something more like, uh, uh, for example, hmm. Okay, now it outputs weight of the of this dish, and uh, for example, let's output calories. Dish energy uh, divide by thousand kilo calories. Here we go. Uh, if I don't change this uh, template uh, and I just create one more, one more dish name ice cream. Let it be a big ice cream. Again, have no idea how many five thousand. Okay, I created uh, one more uh, one more dish, and now it appears in our view because we have a iteration uh, by all dishes. Yeah. Um, Okay, that was the uh, like first thing uh, we did. Um, two things here. Uh, first of all, uh, I specified, I named uh, my view uh, the same way uh, as my uh, action is named. It's kind of convention. It's like better to stick to it. Uh, it's it will feel weird for uh, your teammates if you would call uh, render all dishes something like this uh, because well if we named action in the um, 
in, as index, then everybody will expect that uh, view is also called index for this section. So better not to overwrite this. Uh, the th second thing is that uh, I do a lot of uh, calculations here. For example, I uh, I wrote dish dot all. That means I kind of create a, a SQL request to the database right from my view. That is not well. That is not a good practice, right? Uh, Basically, we need controllers in order to, like, controllers receive requests, then uh, it takes uh, data, for example, uh, get some data from the database, write some data to the database, and then render view uh, and return it back to the browser. So, uh, making requests to database is controllers work. Uh, we don't need to, we shouldn't do this in our views. Um, and uh, we have a special mechanism to pass some data to our views. For example, if we uh, instantiate uh, an instance variable in our action, for example, I will call it dishes, uh, I create a new instance variable in my controller, uh, then it is possible to uh, pass this, uh, to use this variable in our view. And it's a simple dishes, right? I created a, an instance variable, and then uh, I can use it in in my view. So let's see that it still works. Yeah, it is. Um, again, the same thing with uh, my count. Right, dishes, um, dish count. Uh, when I uh, when I write uh, dish dot count, it also makes a separate request to the database. Uh, we uh, can check this in our console. Here we go. Uh, when I when I call dish count, it uh, makes this request: select count asterisk from dishes. And uh, when I make uh, dishes dot all. Uh, it makes another request for uh, select uh, all fields from uh, table dishes. Um, okay, that's how we how we uh, can uh, can uh, I don't know create or form some data in our controller and then pass it to our views. Um, Well, uh, I said it's not usually a good practice to make requests from views, and uh, especially it uh, becomes a pain uh, when you need like more complex calculations than just uh, dish, than just dish all, uh, because well sometimes we need a pagination, right? Uh, and uh, we, if we have like a thousand of different dishes in our system, we don't want to show them on one page because, well, our browser will stack, uh, page will be low, like, will take a lot of time to load, something like this. So we need to show, uh, I don't know, uh, 20 different dishes per page and then, like, make user uh, iterate through those pages. And when we have to, like those complex calculations, we especially don't want to see them in our views. Um, okay, uh, we just created uh, simple, uh, simple uh, action. We just created a simple uh, view. Uh, let's go further. Now, for example, well, right now it's just a very simple. I don't know, very simple uh, page. Uh, 
uh, let me for example uh, we no longer want to create new dishes through controller we want our users be able to create those dishes so how we can do this uh, the easiest way is to add another action to our controller uh, and add a link on our page let's start from link uh, Okay, what I just uh, give me a second. Okay, fine. Uh, let it be just uh, a link. Uh, what I just did uh, again, I made uh, some interpolation and then I wrote some code. Uh, what is this code? Uh, I used uh, some like special method called link to. Uh, this method is a built-in method in Rails. Uh, we call them helpers. Uh, and this method creates a link uh, with uh, like with text we pass to it. Uh, let's quickly uh, check how it works. Uh, how we can check it? Of course, we go to uh, docs and like see how it works. Mm. While it's loading, let me show you uh, in code how uh, output code for link two looks like. Uh, Yeah, it's just like very simple link with uh, href dishes and text new dish. Well, basically it, uh, when we click, we go to the same page. I don't know, it looks like uh, that's how link two works uh, by default. If we, yeah, here we go. Uh, we may read all the documentation for link two. You may see that it uh, like, it's pretty pretty huge, but uh, let's see, for example, I don't know, uh, signatures. Uh, one way to use link2 is to like specify link2, then we pass body. Body is text we see on page, is what, uh, that's what goes inside uh, those A tag. Uh, I specified new dish, it like, inside a tag. Uh, the second option uh, may be URL. Uh, so let's try, let's try. By default, it goes to the same page. Uh, let me uh, specify a new URL. Dishes uh, new, let it be something like this. Uh, reload the page. Yeah, here we go. Uh, href just change it to dishes new, to what I specified as a second argument. Uh, and then uh, we may pass uh, some HTML options. What HTML options may look like? Uh, well, there are many possible, many possible options. You may read them in documentation. I highly recommend you to use uh, Epidoc or I don't know, API, Ruby on Rails .org, uh, to read docs because, well, uh, we have a lot of like, many different, uh, many different helpers, uh, many different useful helpers. And it's hard to, uh, if you use them often, uh, you remember what uh, the order of arguments you may need to pass them. But when you are learning, uh, you like need to consult with docs very often. So, uh, okay, we just created uh, this link, uh, but it won't work. 
right? If I click on it, I will see an error because we don't have a road for this path for dishes uh, slash new. Uh, so let's go and create this. Uh, again, uh, I use a resources here. You may also read in docs uh, what kind of uh, roads it creates, but well, I just need to specify new here. Uh, let's reload. Well, it's still, let's see that uh, in Rails roads that this new road was added. Yeah, here we go, dishes new. Uh, and then uh, let's uh, see, we have a special column here called prefix. Uh, how we can use this, this column? Uh, well, when, rail, when we add a new road to our Rails app, uh, Rails framework uh, creates a special helper for us. Uh, I probably uh, mentioned this on a previous lecture, but uh, at least Rails created two different helpers for us. Uh, one of which is a new underscore dish underscore pass, uh, which outputs which outputs the road or URL for for this for this road. Let's see that it works. Right now, uh, I specified it as a hard coded string, but I don't want to do this. I may do it like this: new dish path. Again, new dish I get from, from this table. And then add that underscore path. And uh, yeah, that's how it works. Let's reload and see that we have no error. We have no error and uh, href says dishes uh, slash new. Click on the new dish. Yeah. Well, now we have uh, another error. Uh, it says that we have no new action. So we can, we can just add it, right? New, render new. Uh, I just created a new action and I'll create a new uh, view for this, for this action. View up views. Uh, dishes new dot html erb oops yeah here we go um, which one new dish let's see Yep, we now have a new page. Uh, let's go back. When I click on a new dish, I want to see a form to create a new dish, right? What can I do? Before we, uh, before we add uh, this form, uh, let me show you uh, something like another useful thing. Um, Uh, we have views, right? Um, except of, uh, we uh, not only have views for each action, we have another kind of special, uh, special views uh, called uh, layout. Uh, they are already created. Uh, if we see views, up views uh, layouts we may see that we have a one file here application.html.rb uh, what is this file for um, as you may notice uh, our page contains not only uh, h1 tag with new dish as we specified in our view right 
it also has some like body tag, some head tag, some title tag, uh, like something CSRF, CSRF token, CSRF param, uh, a tag for style sheet. Uh, where, uh, where did they come from? Uh, they come from our layout, uh, uh, from our layout template. For example, uh, let's change, we may change the title of our app. Right now it's called Rubitsa Views. Uh, let's rename it. If we like reload our page, we may see that uh, a new title is appeared because we changed, we just changed our layout. Also, uh, we may add some like new tags here. And uh, those tags, the tags I add in layout file, they will appear uh, like in all the views, right? Uh, what what kind of text we may want to see here. For example, we may want to see a navigation, navigation links here. Let's quickly add them. Um, what I want to see here is like two, two um, links. One link is link to uh, all Uh, and then I see that all dishes uh, goes with prefix dishes, so I use it dishes path. Right. And then I add one more uh, link to link to new dish new dish path let's see that it works okay now we have some kind of a navigation on our uh, in our app if we click uh, all dishes, uh, we go to the all dishes page. Uh, if we click on a new dish, uh, we go to the new dish page. Uh, let's add some space between those links. Okay, recall space. All dishes again. Uh, new dish. We may remove this new dish from our old dishes page, but like, let's not bo bother. Um, okay. What, uh, what's next? Uh, let's uh, add some form to our new dish page, right? We want to create, we want to be able to, to uh, type name and uh, calories from the form from our browser, not in console. Well, maybe not we, but our users want to do this. Um, again, I may uh, create, I may type like a simple HTML here, like I well, did on a previous lecture, right? Form, uh, close tag, something like this. Uh, instead, I may want to. Um, uh, I may want to use a special helper uh, that is that is built in in Rails already. Uh, there are uh, multiple reasons we want to use a helper instead of writing our own uh, text. The first reason is that. Uh, well, Rails uh, framework has uh, many built-in security mechanisms. So if we will, uh, if you remember last time I disabled uh, CSRF uh, token. 
uh, in order to submit like the form I just created it but by hand. Mm, I don't want to disable any security uh, mechanisms in my app. I want to be uh, as well, I want to have a high sec. I, I want my app to be like very secure for all the hackers we have in the internet, right? So, uh, well, it, that was the first reason. Uh, the second reason is that uh, we uh, will type less code if we use uh, helpers instead of uh, writing our forms by our hands. Let's see how it works. Uh, first of all, we will use uh, form tag uh, helper. How it works? Uh, form tag. Well, let's see some example. Uh, you may see that. Uh, well, first option is a is a link we send this form to. Uh, second option is uh, some kind of hash. We may specify a method. Uh, another uh, params like multipart, something like this. And then, uh, then uh, we may pass. We may send a block to this form tag, and in inside, uh, like in this block, we may call uh, like different other different tags. I will show you the example. Form tag. Let it be just simple string for now. Uh, we want to. We don't have an action for creating a new dish right now, right? So we uh, let's keep it for now. Uh, but we know that we want to uh, we want to use method post when we create a new uh, when we send the create request. Uh, okay. As I said, uh, we used a uh, block with our form tag helper. And uh, inside this block, we may use other helpers. Uh, one of these helper uh, may be submit tag. Let's see how it works. Uh, submit tag uh, creates a submit button for our form. So why not to use it, right? Submit tag. What is the... Uh, options, arguments. So first argument is a string, uh, is like the string we will see on this button and we may pass uh, like many other options. Let's not worry about them right now. Uh, create a dish, create, let's name it just create. Let's see that it works. Yeah, here we go. We see a create button. Uh, if we take a look at sources of, of our page, we will see that we have a form, a form tag here. And uh, we not only have a input type submit, uh, blah, 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 value create, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, not only our submit tag, but we have uh, two hidden inputs. Uh, one hidden input is for UTF-8, uh, don't worry about this right now. And the second uh, hidden input is for authenticity token. Uh, again, this, is, uh, this uh, token protects your app uh, from, or protects your users from being hacked. Um, I hope we will have a lecture about all those security things. I, I won't stop uh, on it right now. Let's add uh, another input. Let's see, we have a submit tag, select tag, blah, blah, blah. What we want to is a, a input tag for our name, right? So we probably have something like, something like this. Mm. Mm. Let's see. Text field tag. Mm. 
Okay, let's wait. Mm, I'll start typing because well, it is it's indeed text field tag. Uh, you may just well when you uh, will start to develop your app, you may just want to click on all those tags to get familiar with them because well there are some useful tags you probably will use. Uh, again, uh, we have a name here, right? Uh, some something like a default value, and uh, uh, like we may pass some options to this uh, to this input. Well, let's start from from something simple. Uh, text field tag uh, name. Let's see how it works. Okay, we have a we have a input right now. Uh, for now, it doesn't say uh, well. It's called name. Uh, uh, that's okay. Uh, uh, we don't we don't know is it an is it an input for name or for other field? How we can uh, specify that uh, this is uh, input for uh, for for our name? Well, uh, there are like multiple options. For example, one option could be is uh, specify place placeholder for this. Um, let's see. Well, in in example, we see that we may pass a placeholder as a second second argument, right? So let's reload. Yeah, we see, uh, well, not, it's a value, not a placeholder. So maybe example is wrong or something like this. Um, so we, as, uh, well, as you can see, uh, first option is a name for our input. Second option is a value. Uh, well, that's why it didn't work. Uh, second option is a value, and since it has a default uh, default value, we may skip it and uh, pass some options. Options is a hash. Uh, this hash uh, could have multiple fields, uh, and some of them are like disabled, size, max length, and placeholder. I just specified placeholder. Let's see how it works. Okay, let it be. Yeah, here we go. We have a name here. Uh, it's a placeholder, it's not a value. I don't need to delete it. I can't delete it in order to type my name. I just uh, start, start inputting uh, a name for this dish. I don't know what kind of dish, so sure. something like this. Uh, but now we know that this field is for name. Let me um, rearrange it a bit nicer, right? Um, I wrap it in div tag. Yeah, that was the first uh, possible way to say that this input is for name. Uh, another way would be to use a label tag. Uh, we have this uh, another helper helper called uh, label tag. Let's see how it works. I'll start typing. Yeah, there are like multiple ways to uh, use it, but 
one of the way is to wrap our uh, our input with this label tag. Let's see that it works. Mm, it doesn't. It doesn't work. Uh, what? Uh, because well, that's one of the way. Um, sorry. Um, options. Options. Block. Okay, let's use it a bit differently. Main. Main. Uh, let's check uh, our HTML that it uh, looks okay. Yeah. Uh, now our label uh, has a uh, attribute for and uh, uh, well this uh, we need to specify uh, ID of input uh, in this for attribute in label uh, if we want to uh, if you want this label to work proper appropriately uh, how, how do we know if it works properly we just click on this label and if we if when we click on the label, our focus goes to the input. Uh, we know that this label works works well. Uh, let me let me quickly try to break it. Well, now when I click on name, nothing happens. Uh, that's fine. Let me quickly create uh, two inputs for other for other fields. What we have, Ray. Gonna need a placeholder here, right? Since we have a label, we don't don't need to have those placeholders. Main. Okay, we now have this uh, very simple form that like uh, appropriately. But uh, when we type something here, create uh, it won't work because we didn't specify, uh, we didn't create a road for this. Let me quickly. Uh, create a road for this right. we just add a new action create we check that a new road is added here we go it's dishes uh, prefix for this road is uh, dishes so well actually well we discussed it last time so I won't repeat it uh, 
uh, we no longer need uh, layout Contact dishes path method post it was saying load let me create a new dev create and uh, mm, I don't need to render right I need to Mm, let me show you something in game plan. Um, I want to show you some uh, like very useful debug technique. Uh, I'm adding a new game, game called uh, Pry Rails. bundle install I'm I'll reload my server when one when new gem is installed I just added a new game called pry rails now I may use a special method in my well anywhere in my code uh, called uh, binding pry let's see how it works here is my uh, screen with my rail server when I like uh, I just entered some data I click create button so a request goes to the uh, create action in my controller and well it will meet binding prime method here let's see how it works uh, browser stacks uh, something wrong the wrong Let me reload the page so the path will be correct. Type it again. Create. Uh, we may see that browser stacks. Uh, it waits uh, for binding pry to execute. But how binding pry works? If we go to the uh, console with this uh, with my rail server, we may see that uh, we now have some kind of uh, like interactive console here, right? And we may see uh, any variable in this method. For example, we may see uh, params, and we may notice that uh, well, uh, we have name here, which we just typed it's sushi uh, we have weight uh, field we have energy field uh, something like this uh, that's very useful debug technique you will use in every app you will you will write uh, if we like done what we wanted to do here uh, we just need to to press uh, ctrl d uh, and it well, kind of continuous to uh, to execute our code, but we have no other lines, so no, we have no lines after binding pry in our action, so it probably uh, did nothing. Yeah, it just returned some uh, two hundred and four uh, code to our browser, and well, had no content, so our browser just did nothing. Uh, what I wanted to do uh, is I want to do two uh, things. Uh, first thing is uh, I don't like that my fields called name, weight, and energy. Uh, what I want to do is to call them differently. For example, something like this: uh, dish name, dish weight, dish energy. Uh, let sorry uh, yeah good catch let's see how it renders right now mm. 
Yeah, you're right. Uh, right now, ID has uh, dish name uh, value, and when I click on the label, it doesn't work. So I need to change our label to dish name. Uh, dish eight. No, I don't need brackets because uh, it it works. It uh, matches label and input not by name but by ID tag. And when we uh, typed uh, square brackets in our name uh, attribute, uh, ID attribute changed, but well, underscore was added in ID attribute, not not square brackets. Let me reload the page. Now our form looks like this, and I click on the label and see that my input is uh, focused. Yeah, very good catch. Uh, why why I just did this? Why I uh, wrote this dish and square brackets? Uh, uh, let me again send some data to my controller, right? Create. Uh, and see that, see our params. Uh, right now, all the params for our dish is nested under the dish k in our params hash. Uh, let's, uh, what I can do here is, uh, mm, okay, let me do it like this. Dish. I write params uh, and like dish in square brackets and now I have only attributes for my uh, for my dish. I don't have uh, authenticity token because well it's Rails job to check this authenticity token that this token is correct. I don't care about commit, uh, about controller and action fields. I need only my fields that I will use to uh, send to the database. <coughs> um, okay. <laughs> Uh, again, I I press Control D, uh, Control D. Uh, it continues to execute. Uh, well, uh, I'll show you one more thing here. Uh, sorry, I just removed pinion try. Again, I'm in create controller. I have params. I have uh, all my needed fields nested under the dish, uh, under the dish uh, uh, key. But uh, if I uh, will use this params dish to create my uh, to create a new dish, I guess it won't work by default. Create dish, times dish. Yeah, it uh, returns an error because it's, well, again, it's a special protective mechanism of Rails framework. Uh, because, for example, if we have, for example, not dish, but uh, if we have a user model, right? And user model may have a special Boolean flag, admin, called admin. And, uh, for example, we will have a form for changing like name of user and uh, I don't know, weight of user, you will need this. Uh, but we don't output, a, uh, we don't output a checkbox for admin field. So we assume users don't, users can't change uh, the admin field of our users. But uh, users may hack our app and add a, uh, Oops. And add a new uh, new input here. They may sorry. I well, it's stuck, so I can change this. But they may edit uh, HTML in their browser and add this new checkbox. And then uh, this field will come to our controller 
and if we just do uh, user uh, create or user uh, update and params for user uh, well we will uh, we will our users will be able to make themselves admins right we don't want we don't want to do this uh, so rails requires us to sanitize our params how we can do this uh, like usually we do it something like this require dish Commit uh, name. Uh, we specify which fields should come from the from the form to our controller. Which fields we will care about? For example, it's uh, name and weight. Well, energy is also a valid field. Uh, yeah, something like this. So params. Uh, dish in square brackets won't work. We will need to do <coughs> to do it in a bit uh, different way. Params require dish permit and a list of um, parameters we approve. Okay, let's go back to the controller. Um, what we will do here? Uh, let's say we create dish params params. What is useful about uh, about this binge and pry is that we kind of play with code, we see the output, and when we get the correct output, we know what we what code we need, right? We just uh, command C, command V. Here we go. Uh, that's how. Uh, that's why binge and pry is so useful. And then uh, what we need is to dish create dish params. I I press Control D because I no longer need I no longer need this binge and pry console. Uh, dish create. Uh, okay, what should happen when we just created a uh, when we just created a new dish? Uh, we probably want to redirect the user to the all dishes page. How we do this? Uh, redirect to dishes path. And uh, as we learned on the previous lecture, we may specify a flash here. Uh, one way to specify flash is something like this. Flash notice uh, dish was a new dish dish new dish dish name was created right that's one way to specify a flash and we may render it in uh, our index index view later but uh, another way to do this is just uh, redirect to and specify a special uh, argument called notice again how how do you know that you may use this notice uh, you go to the api doc uh, select ruby on rails and uh, see how redirect to works Another very useful technique you will use uh, in every app, reading epidoc or other docs for methods you use. Let me copy this. I hope it will work. Uh, well, uh, I just specified the flash, but we uh, never render it. Uh, in order to render it, uh, I will render it in a, uh, in our layout. Well, I guess it's the best way for for rendering it. Okay.
Slash notes. While it's loading, no AP doc. No, oh, it's the same. In well, the internet is just slow or something like that. Okay, uh, let's hope I'm correct here with my... Uh, I, <laughs> I hope I still remember how it works. Um, again, we just let me reload the page so it... Screen again, social... Replicate... Yeah, here we go. A new dish uh, sushi was created uh, and we see it in our list. Uh, that's how it works. Usually we don't render anything in our create action, we just redirect to somewhere after we create it. We may add something like this uh, if, uh, if dish uh, blah 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 else and and do something like uh, render new again with something like error or mm, there is notice and another probably error I don't remember uh, some error happened Right? We may we may want to do this. We may want to check that our dish is created correctly. But I I won't do this right now because it takes it takes time. Um. Okay. No longer need this. Training. Yeah, uh, uh, basically uh, all data uh, we type in form comes as a string to our controller. Uh, let's see this. Uh, name. Some text. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have bing and pry, right? Uh, if we take a look at dish uh, params, we may notice that all data is R strings, like spaghetti name is string, weight is string, uh, energy is string. But our dish, uh, dish model uh, says that name should be string, like it's in database name stored as a string, but weight and energy uh, are stored as integers. So when I uh, pass a string uh, to the weight field, uh, in dish uh, create uh, rails uh, automatically uh, do the conversion conversion for you it checks that okay weight uh, is uh, integer in database so let me try to convert weight params for weight param from string to the integer it's uh, well we call this uh, type coercion but well, right now we typed uh, energy as a uh, weird string. Uh, there should be an error. Uh, how we may check this? Uh, we did dish create and then uh, stored result in dish. Let's see uh, what we have in dish. Uh, we see that uh, dish is dish has uh, like name, weight, and energy. Well, uh, 
looks like it is created successfully. But well, instead of energy, we have zero here. Uh, well, not nil. That's how it converted the string to the integer. English error. Uh, yeah, no errors. If we want to prevent this, uh, we may specify some validation in model. Uh, well, if we use a number helper for number, it still will send uh, data as string. Uh, well, kind of, kind of, yes. Uh, user won't be able to type text here, but uh, user will be able to edit your page and uh, uh, like fix it for you. Let's quickly, uh, we have a number field tag. Let me quickly demonstrate it, right? It shouldn't take, it should take a couple of minutes. Uh, we need to, to write a validation, uh, validation in our model. In model, yeah. No, we write a validation in model and then when we try to save, uh, to create, to call dish.create in our controller, uh, error, an error will happen. Uh, this will return false and, uh, and a special, uh, a special, there will be a special field called errors on, on the result of this create. Well, uh, quick, quick. Let me stop our beans and fries session. Right. A new spaghetti is created. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm running out of names for our dishes. <laughs> uh, energy, right? It doesn't allow me to type any string. It only allow me it only allows me to specify a number. What I can do here, I may uh, inspect the page. Uh, inspect. And then change, uh, change the HTML, right? Uh, here we have input type, number type, text. Here we go. I just hacked my app and I, if I, uh, if I uh, send this data, we will see that uh, dish params again contains this uh, string. So uh, it's not a reliable way. The reliable way is to add some validation in our model. Okay, fine. Uh, we have to uh, Two spaghetti. I'll remove one. I'll remove two, so I can create it again, because I don't know new names for new dishes. Uh, okay, that's fine. Um, if I no longer need to. Um, pam, 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 pam. We have this form. Uh, <laughs> let me quickly another action called edit. For example, uh, I realized I was wrong when I typed 10 kilocalories for pepperoni pizza. It should be like a hundred kilocalories, right? Or a thousand. Uh, I want to edit this new pepperoni pizza. Uh, what I should do? Uh, first of all, I create a new, uh, I create a new action, create, edit, be nice, oops, um, let me up this layout, not application layout, uh, bam. We see that we have a edit dish uh, road right now. Uh, how we can use it? Uh, 
for our dish we add a new line called well not called but we say link link to edit uh, edit uh, dish path again edit dish path edit dish path and uh, since our road is kind of parameterized road it uh, it has a id param inside it we need to pass this id we may do it like multiple ways for example id uh, dish dot uh, this uh, should work but usually uh, or by convention or if you read the documentation for uh, pass helpers we may just pass uh, our dish object and uh, this helper will automatically call, uh, call id method on our dish and use it as an id param that's uh, what people sometimes call magic of rails right we just pass dish uh, it works appropriately let's see Let's see. Well, we have now we now have those edit uh, links. Let me quickly check that they have a correct pass. Yeah, indeed, we have uh, dishes two. I guess we have dishes three here. Yeah. Well, it works. Uh, again, when we added a new road, we need to add a new action. Adef, edit. What should happen here in this edit? Uh, well, at least uh, we want to render render edit um, action. Uh, okay, let's create it. We up use uh, dishes edit HTML ALB. Mm. Which one? Uh, yes, that's why I well started. It is. It's a long way to show to show you what you just said about. Um, okay, we just like uh, uh, render edit uh, edit view. Okay. Let me let me check that what I just wrote it works. For example, I click edit. Yeah, it works, but uh, we don't see a form here. Uh, we well, we know that our uh, our form for uh, edit uh, for editing. Uh, the dish uh, well should look very similar to the form we use for create right well basically if I just like let me copy paste it for now form tag well with a couple of difference right pass would be different uh, method would be not paused but uh, page And uh, we not only we uh, want to already prefill our form with our dish, something like we want in our well. Okay, let me qu quickly check that this works. Uh, let me one second. Update where is reload. Right. Uh, well, I see the, the same form, but uh, instead of having empty inputs, see the data for my dish here. Oops, sorry, I, I'll return number is okay. Um, how can I get this? How can I get this data? Well, we have a, a ID of dish in our params, right? Uh, well, you should don't trust me let's quickly check it 
Beans and fry is very useful thing. Uh, beans and fry. Reload the page. Uh, there we have. We have well, okay. We are now in a detection params. Params. Uh, and we can see that we have ID param. Params. ID. What we can do with this ID? Uh, well, we may like load our dish. Dish find params ID. Uh, okay, now we have dish, and this dish have has uh, name and other fields. What should we do with this? Um, well, I'm pressing Control D and go to the editing my controller. Again, uh, I specify I load my dish to the instance variable, right? Find uh, params ID. So I can use this uh, instance variable in my view later. I go to the view and now I have a, a dish variable here. Uh, dish mm, name. Dish Dish Energy uh, Well, it should say not create but uh, update Reloading the page Yeah, now I see my, well, uh, the current data uh, for this dish. What can I do with this? Uh, in order to update, right, uh, I need to send, um, I can't send this data to the create action because uh, create action will just create a new, a new dish. I need a new action. Uh, the action is called update. Update. Uh, min rails roads. Well, maybe you don't need to uh, write uh, bin rails road so often, but well, it kind of helps, uh, especially in the beginning. We may see that uh, two new roads was added. Uh, they are identical, but the, well, but the verb is different. Uh, so that means that we may use uh, patch and put for our update update action. I uh, decided to use page and prefix is dish and it also has param id. Uh, so let's start. Uh, first of all, I write dish path, right? Uh, that's, that's, how, that's how I use prefix. Uh, now I need to pass id param. Again, I may pass it something like this, dish id, but I don't need to do this. I just may pass an object and Rails automatically will uh, recall the ID on this dish object. Um, so the path will look like uh, slash dishes slash uh, ID. Uh, let's see that it is true. Uh, we will see it in the source of the of this of the page. Reloading. No, uh, I made a typo in my reloading one more time. Here we go. We have a form uh, and uh, attribute action, which says dishes slash ID of dish. Uh, now all the data will go to the update uh, update action, right, dev, update. Uh, how do I know that it goes to the update? I see that uh, dishes slash id goes to the uh, dishes controller, update action. Update. Again, uh, we do beans and pry. Here for the first time, I click update. Open my console and see. Uh, here we go. Our params. Our params again require uh, dish. Uh, 
permit we allow to change only name and weight and energy something like this and then uh, we may pass uh, those params where should we pass them uh, well first of all we need to uh, find our dish how we can find it we have id param here uh, so it should be like dish uh, find params id as you notice for uh, for find uh, for find method we don't need no we don't need to permit any values because it's it doesn't change anything in our database uh, selecting data is safe uh, so like we found this uh, and then we may call dish update on uh, our params require blah 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 here we go it works now we just need to write exactly the same code in our controller right mm. let's do this dish 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 find Um, what should we do after this? Let's probably redirect the user to the index action again, right? Redirect to uh, dishes path um, with some notice. Notice the dish, the dish, dish name. name was updated uh, let it be like this right we update uh, our dish and redirect to the uh, to the index section uh, let's see that it works. I'm refreshing the page. Right now our energy has, uh, well, our ice cream has five uh, kilocalories. Let it be 50, 50 kilocalories. I click update. Uh, we are successfully redirected to the dishes page. Uh, we see the notice. Uh, and we can see that our ice cream has now 50 kilocalories. Mm. Well, Google says that uh, one scoop of, uh, of ice cream has uh, 127 calories. That's not much. Okay, fine. Um, yeah, that's, well, now we can uh, create new dishes, we can update uh, new dishes. Well, but now we have uh, pretty weird some well, two weird parts in our code base. Uh, first thing is uh, we kind of duplicate our params require blah, 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 right? We use the same code in our update action and in our create action. We can do better. Uh, we don't need to duplicate this code. We can do better. Uh, how? Basically, we just add a new private method to our controller private methods don't become actions well basically methods don't become actions until we specify them in our roads right so i will just add 
uh, a new uh, method called dish uh, params dish params i just copy copy everything to the dish params and instead of duplicating code i just you i just call this dish params method here I just need to just remove this dish params dish params fine uh, that was like a first thing I wanted to fix uh, we just we removed uh, duplication from our code uh, but that's not that's not well it's not all duplication right we have a very similar form I'm quickly switching between those uh, different views new view and edit view and you may see that uh, they are like very similar imagine we will add a new field to our dish for example i don't know whatever uh, i don't know the number of dishes we have in our fridge for example or um, i don't know uh, something like good until some date for example and uh, in order to do this we will need to go to the uh, to the new uh, to the new view and to the edit view and change them both how we can i don't know simplify this or uh, like unify this uh, we may use a special thing uh, called uh, partial what is partial? Uh, partial is a special view that we, well, we usually don't render partial from our controller action, but we render partial from uh, other views, right? Uh, by convention, up views, uh, dishes. Uh, by convention, we name our partials. We start, um, we start naming uh, our partials with underscore so I kind of type underscore form dot html dot erb uh, okay that that will be our partial let me uh, copy our code from uh, From our, I removed uh, the the code for for our form from new. Uh, well, I kind of mm, let's not do this right now. Uh, I want to show you before partials. I want to show you another another technique. Uh, well, for now. Uh, that this code look similar but not the same right uh, they it is a little bit different um, how we can like make it look a little bit similar so we can extract it to the partial uh, we can do this uh, we can do this uh, using other uh, special helper of rails uh, right now we use form tag uh, we may want uh, we may use uh, form for uh, form for helper uh, form for this is a built-in helper in rails how it works form for uh, form for uh, receives uh, receives the uh, our mm, receives an object well i'll demonstrate you i want to uh like show you how it how it well i will show you how it works i want uh, reread all the docs because uh, you can do this yourself i will send you the link for this uh, right now we have an edit edit uh, view let's check that it works correctly okay something like this uh, I will type 
uh, form for form for uh, dish do and I will keep the old form so we can compare them in uh, in uh, browser. Uh, form for do test. Uh, if we didn't pass anything to the block in the uh, old form, we now have a special variable. Well, I I call it f. We may call this like whatever i. Well, a lot of people use f for this. And right now we may do something like this: f input name let's see how it works i'm reload i'll reload the page mm -hmm. uh, probably not input but something like text field right. text field Yeah, you can see that we have now we now have a um, text field. Uh, let's compare it in source code. Uh, you may see that our input has a name, dish name, and uh, in well the same way we did it in a previous uh, old form. But right now we don't specify it manually. Uh, Rails kind of. Rails understand that uh, our dish is an object of model dish of class dish and will automatically generate this uh, name for us. We know we don't need to specify it, specify it separately. We just say like its name. Okay, uh, another thing I want to return back our label. Uh, well, in examples, it says we can't. Uh, okay, fine. Um, fine, 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 fine. This is this one. Um, let me quickly check. Uh, quickly check options for text field. Object name, blah, 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 options, source class. I'm a bit lazy. I don't want to, to create label like separately, but it looks like we have to do this, right? So I'll just copy it. Um, fine, I'll copy it, but instead of uh, text field tag, I will use f uh, text field uh, wait. And again, I don't need to specify a value for this because well, Rails will do it automatically. F number field. Well, if I if I remember it right, well, no, no, uh, later. And uh, we need to have a submit tag. Probably it's just uh, something like f submit submit uh, update right. Let's check. Yeah, uh, well now our two forms looks 
look very very similar right the action is the same the method is the same uh, blah 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 method is the same oh, fine okay well uh, as you may notice I specified method page right and we need to use method page for updating our our objects but uh, Rails do it differently. Rails use method post in our form and uh, specify it uh, in the, the real method it's specified in a hidden field. Why, why does Rails do this? Uh, it's because some browsers don't support uh, methods other than post and get. Uh, and it's kind of hack for other browsers that don't support this. So don't be confused. You use method page but it says post and the real method is in a hidden field uh, since forms are similar uh, let's remove our old form we no longer need this uh, okay reload the page Hammer engine. let's change it to something like this update uh, okay, I scream. Now it says it has zero uh, because, well, it's kilocalories. Uh, let it be uh, a thousand calories, so it means one kilocalorie. Okay, something like this. Again, edit. Uh, everything works well. We just changed the code for our form uh, and it works well. How we can uh, like now our our edit and our new uh, view look more different than it looked before. Uh, how we can like uh, mitigate this? I don't know. Uh, by the way, uh, you probably didn't notice, but. Uh, here in my form uh, form for editing the post I didn't specify method page but in the hidden field we had this method page how how it works uh, well rails I guess uh, checks that dish is the uh, is the object that already exists in the database that it already has ID field uh, and that means this form is probably for updating, not for creating, right? And that's why Rails use method patch. Like that's what people call magic of, of Rails. Uh, okay, I just copied our form. Uh, first of all, uh, our submit uh, is called not, uh, not update, but create. And uh, we don't have dish here. Uh, we may do it uh, something like this dish let's see that it works new dish uh, at least it's correct let's see that our well names for our fields are correct mm, quickly checking this yeah uh, well names are correct uh, the pass is not correct it says dish is new but we need to send it to create action and create action is not dishes new but uh, here we go create action is just dishes right uh, what we can do uh, what we can do here well uh, you may notice that uh, now forms are more similar than it was before uh, we may do it even more similar uh, for example we may do it something like this uh, pass a dish object but in our new method in our new action we don't have this 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 dish object uh, what should we do we uh, in our new we may create this dish right we may specify it something like this dish uh, dish new uh, well uh, it will try to uh, like preload this text field with uh, with the name of this dish object but uh, this dish object is just newly created object it has a empty name field 
so the form should look the same it will be empty for our new dish uh, what's changed well uh, our inputs are the same as they were before labels work uh, as it worked before but since we now pass an object uh, rails automatically detects that uh, this uh, object is a, like is an object that is not stored in database it's just newly created object so we probably this is probably form for creating a new object that's why it automatically sets that method post and automatically sets the correct action again uh, that's uh, how form for uh, helper works that's why it's so useful and now if we look at the difference between those two forms we may notice that well only submit uh, submit uh, action is different uh, what we can do now uh, and now we may like move it away to the uh, to our partial yeah. uh, something like this uh, instead of uh, we moved to the to we move uh, we moved our form to a separate partial and now we need to render this partial uh, how we can do this we just use a helper called render uh, render form uh, render form okay something like this let's see that it works it is for edit i changed edit view so let's go to the edit page edit page i click edit uh, here we go edit works as it worked before um yeah the button says update let's now remove our form from the new view and uh, uh, form and now change our new new view new template uh, as you may notice that uh, i named my partial starting from underscore right that's a convention for partials but when I render them, I don't use this underscore. Rails automatically like uh, understand that I want to render partial here and uh, partial is called form. Therefore, it is named underscore form on the file system. Uh, let's see that uh, new dish form still works. It is works, but uh, one thing I don't like here is that update button. Well, we, we create a button, we create a new dish. We don't want the button say, say update. Uh, how we can change this? Well, we may pass some params to our partial. We render form partial and pass, for example, I'll say, I'll name it commit name, commit create uh, in our mm, commit create. Uh, well, not, not create, but update. And in our partial, uh, we don't want to hard code the name for submit, but we may use uh, the value we just passed. Let's see that I did it correctly. Yeah, now our button uh, says uh, create and if we go to another to the edit edit form it should say uh, update well now we no longer repeat our form in two different templates we extracted the same code in a separate partial and uh, like make it work made it work uh, <laughs> well, I I have only one topic uh, to tell you about is uh, one last one last thing I want to to discuss. Uh, we now know that we may use uh, like many different helpers that is made by rails for us right uh, some somebody or developers of rails framework 
uh, created a form for helper for us. It is very useful helper. Uh, but what if we want to uh, create our own our own helper? For example, if we have a lot of forms in our app and we are and we get tired with typing uh, f dot submit commit uh, every time, right? What what should how we how can we work with this? For example, instead of typing f dot submit commit, uh, we want to uh, sorry. Oops, sorry. Somebody. Well, TV like implies that we should go and rest for today. <laughs> well, one last thing. Okay. Okay. Instead of uh, writing it like this, uh, we want to type something like submit uh, button, right? And uh, we just may pass form form to this helper. Uh, how can we make this work? Uh, in our Rails app, uh, we have a we have a special folder called app helpers. App helpers, and uh, in this app helpers, we may, uh, well, we may create new helpers and store new helpers. Uh, for example, right now I want to create a new form uh, form helper dot rb, and here module form helper def submit submit button submit button it receives our form and it outputs f submit submit uh, mm, it should receive f our form and uh, our commit variable mm. f commit well what i do here it's not very practical nobody will do this i just want to show you that we may uh, we may create our own helpers uh, here i created a new submit button helper and i may use it like this well i don't improve anything just demonstrating you that uh, you may create new helpers. Sometimes it makes sense. Well, it works. And uh, let's see that new dish forum work. Yeah, it works as well. We have create button. Well, sometimes we have uh, some, uh, I don't know, repetitive code in our templates or very complex code. And we want to extract this complexity to a separate method. Where should we place this method? And one of the ways uh, is to place this method to the uh, like our own created helper well uh, that's basically it for today uh, what i want to say that uh, well helpers uh, well default or standard rails helpers i mean the helpers we may create in app helpers folder they are not very useful or not very good thing to do uh, because um, because they are global. For example, I just created a new file called form helper, created a new method here. I, I never required it somewhere, never like tied it with a controller or with my particular template. That means, uh, but I still can use uh, this helper in my, in my template. How it works? Uh, well, Rails makes all the methods in all the our helpers global, and uh, well, that's not that usually goes wrong on a long time. Uh, when when you write more and more and more and more code in your app, uh, you have like a lot of global methods, and they don't look good. 
южами. Uh, no, for helpers we use modules because we never instantiate it. Okay, yes, that's basically it for today. Uh, we went through the creating a new views. We, well, during our road of inspecting views, we created uh, like almost full uh, create, read, update, delete controller instead of reading and deleting. You will do it yourself, I believe in you. Uh, we learned partials and we learned that we can create new helpers if we want to. I don't recommend this. I'll send you a link to the chat so you can learn what we can do instead of uh, creating new, um, new helpers on our own. There are like more advanced techniques and but they are they have more pros than standard default uh, helpers yeah thank you very much if you don't have any questions that's it for today